So now that the seasons are changing and it's time to get ready for our fall gardens, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about seed germination, how inexpensive and unproblematic it truly can be. Something to consider when talking about the germination of seeds is that it doesn't need to be overtly complicated or expensive. Your seed germination should be a simple and inexpensive process. A seed is the embryonic state of a plant's life cycle. So everything that seed needs is going to be in the embryonic tissue. And it's gonna be a mixture of oil, starch, and protein. So it has everything it needs. The only variable that you're applying are the conditions. Now granted, those conditions do change depending on what seed it is you're growing. For instance, passion fruit, the germination process for it is gonna be completely different from that of a Swiss char. So it really depends on the seed that you're germinating. Here's a video on a simple DIY seed germination that I use from recycled materials just around my house to show you how uncomplicated and inexpensive it really can be. So yeah, I did purchase this cake pan, but this cake pan actually came from the dollar store and it was literally a dollar. And most of the other materials are sourced from around my home or from other fellow gardeners. The soil that I'm using for this uh, seed starting mix is actually just native soil from my land mixed in with a little bit of perlite and some organic compost that I actually just made uh, here on my homestead. Um, gardening can be expensive if you allow it to be. I've said this in many of my other videos and I truly believe this. You can buy your soil, you can buy your seed starting kits, you can buy this and you can buy that. Remember, these companies that exist and usually they sell this stuff around the spring and nothing against these companies wanting to make a profit. Hey, we live in a capitalist society and that's what you want to do is make profit. But remember, they're trying to, to make money off of it. And if you truly are homesteading or if you're truly trying to get into gardening and you want to be self-sufficient, really the way to go is to start trying to make this stuff yourself. These are actually spinach seeds that I harvested all of my spinach plant when it started to bolt last season. Um, so I'm not buying new seeds. I mean, especially if it's a crop that I consistently grow and in the fall season, yes, spinach, broccoli, and uh, my leafy greens are what I'm gonna be planting in my fall garden because they are cool other plants. Uh, I mean, I've germinated seeds, uh, like you say, in this little miniature greenhouse that I'm showing you here, as well as I've germinated seeds in just paper towels uh, or placing them in a Ziploc bag and placing them in a south facing window. So as you can see from the, the lion's share of this video, seed starting and germination does not have to be really complicated. There's a multitude of different options that you can take. I mean, for instance, there's rock wool, there's hydroponic growing, there's soil. Um, I mean, the, the there's a vast majority out there. Now, most of these things you do have to purchase. And hence, that's why I just go with the old tried and true traditional method of just using soil. Or sometimes I will just grow hydroponically in just water uh, just to get my seed started. What we're looking at here are some zucchini seeds that are germinating because uh, they definitely are going into my fall garden. Get away from the mating season of the squash vine borer moth uh, that likes to lay its eggs in the soil and then they find, uh, they, excuse me, then they uh, bore into the uh, vines of all of your uh, viney plants like your cucumbers, your watermelons, squash and zucchini and so forth. Another cool weather plant that we're uh, looking at here. These are seedlings for broccoli. Uh, interestingly enough, it only took about three days for these to germinate. And uh, if we wanted to, we could actually use these as a microgreen. But we're going to actually let these go full term so we can get some good florets off of them. Now, these are some volunteer watermelon seedlings that are growing up. Uh, I actually had composted some watermelon in that area. I chose not to harvest the seeds. I figured that I would actually get some uh, seedlings coming up out of the ground. And lo and behold, we have about, I would say, anywhere between 18 to 25 seedlings that are popping up. So I'm going to see if I can try to hold on to these during the winter, maybe nurse them in a uh, greenhouse during the winter to see if I can have them for next spring. Now, if you found this content helpful, 
Consider sharing it with a friend, possibly throwing me a like. Appreciate you. Enjoy life, enjoy family, and enjoy your garden. Thanks for watching, guys.